Greetings and welcome to another episode of Gwinnett County Public Library's Introduction to Python series. My name is Fernando and I'm a Learning Lab Specialist here at GCPL and I am excited to help you with your Python journey. So in today's episode we're going to do something a little bit different than episodes one through four. If you haven't watched episode one through four, uh, I recommend uh, checking out the playlist on GCPL's YouTube and watch those. In this episode, we are going to be doing a task-based approach. We're going to be programming a magic eight ball or a fortune teller. Pretty much, you know, standard. I think most of us have, uh, you know, had the little magic eight ball as a kid. You know, it was really popular in the 80s. Uh, but the way it works, you know, you, you, know, you shake the ball and you ask it a yes or no question, and then it gives you a response. And it's usually something like yes, no, maybe, outlook not so good, try again later, things like that. So pretty straightforward. So uh, what we're going to do is take what we've learned from episodes one through four and make that happen. So uh, let's go ahead and write out uh, what we're going to need. And I'm just going to, I have Replit open here, and I'm just going to create a, a comment, a little line, of some things that we need the program to do. So first, we need to capture user input, right? Because we want the user to enter in their yes or no question. Now, with whatever they enter, it really doesn't matter. We're not going to do anything with that, uh, with that information that they provide. So if they ask, is it going to rain today? Um, we're not going to save that. I mean, we are, but we're, it's not value to us because what we're going to be doing is returning a random response, right? So in episode four, we got into the random module. So we'll need to import random. We're going to need to import that, and that's going to give us access to random.randint. And then I'll also show another um, thing we can do, which is random.choice. But so, so far we need to make sure to capture user input and import random. And we need to have a way to choose the random response. So we could assign each response with a maybe a number. And when the number generates, we could then use that to output the, the response. So we can, we need some kind of logic, right? I guess is what I'm trying to get at. So we need logic, maybe some ifs, right? Ifs, elifs. Whoop. There we go. I don't know why uh, Replit wants to complete my uh <laughs> what i type so let's start with that so magic eight ball we need to capture user input we want to import random because we want to uh you know have a random response we're going to need some logic so what i want you to do if you've watched episodes one through four or even if you haven't pause the video and see if you can make the magic eight ball fortune teller program work so pause the video now. All right. I'm sure you guys got it. I'm sure you knocked it out of the park. Uh, but I'm going to show you a couple ways that I would do it. So first thing I'm going to do is import random because that's a module that I want to access. Next thing I want to do is create a, a user input. So I'm just going to do user input and we'll just say user question equals and we want user input right just like we learned in episode one say greetings ask the magic eight Ooh, all right 
magic eight. Oh, I think it's just magic eight. Oh, not magic nine ball. Magic eight ball. Actually, yeah, let's let's uh, mix it up. We'll do magic nine ball. Nah, just kidding. We'll go eight. Ask the magic eight ball a yes or no question. Okay. So if we were to uh, run this program now, we run it. It's going to present the user greetings. Ask the magic eight. Magic eight. We need a magic eight ball. All right. So ask the magic eight ball a yes or no question. We could say, is it going to rain? And nothing happens because that's all we've done. So now, what do we want to do? The way I would do it is I would go ahead and create a variable called answer. And let's do the answer to be random dot rand int. And I want maybe six different responses. So I'm going to go, I need a number from one. That's going to be the first parameter there. And then six. So give me a number between one and six. And now I'm going to do if answer equal equal one print uh, we'll say uh, outlook not so good okay and now whoop, need my parentheses now I'm going to do my else if elif answer equal equal to print and what do we want to print uh, how about we just do yes now we're gonna work smart and not hard since we're gonna have other else ifs I'm just going to copy this else if and paste it down here we'll do another one we'll do another one we'll do another one change this to three We'll say no. We'll say maybe. We'll do try again later. And be sure that you change the numbers here. So five. And let's do, let's see. What, how about we do, I didn't hear you ask me again uh, now let's just do like let's keep it simple we'll just go yeah there we go super excited magic eight ball all right so now we've got uh, some logic an if statement and just to go through this we have import random, which is going to give us access to the random module, so we can use rand int. And user question, ask the magic eight ball, a yes or no question. Answer, it's going to assign a random number. If that random number is a one, outlook not so good. If it's a two, yes. Three, no. Four, maybe. Five, try again later. Six, yeah. So now let's run it. Let's test it. Greetings, ask the magic eight ball a yes or no question. Is the, we'll say is GCPL's intro to Python series amazing? Try again later. All right, fair enough. And let's run it again. Let's say, is it going to rain today no good that's great because I need to mow the grass thank you magic eight ball so that's one way that you can tackle the magic eight ball now this one's a little busy um, because we have uh, some logic where it's you know if answer equals one outlook not good LF answer two, print yes so we can do this another way too and 
what I'm going to do is just triple quote this out. We need, we're going to keep the magic eight ball user input. And I'm just going to move, move this down here. I don't know why my triple quotes are not working. All right, here we go. Quote, quote, quote. Quote, quote, quote. Having issues with my mouse here. Okay. Should be good now. Let me run it. See if it ignores everything. There we go. Now we should be good. Having issues with my keyboard and, and uh, mouse. So this works. Just say question. Yep. Okay. So we're just going to keep the user question. Um, so now what I'm going to do is use a list. And I believe we went into, got into a list in episode three in detail. So what I'm going to do is create a list of responses. So I'm just going to call this answers. Or we'll call it responses. Why not? Responses. But it's your program. You can call it whatever you want responses and to make a list remember we have to have our brackets and then in the brackets I'm going to create a list of responses so I'm going to do yes comma and we'll do no comma try again later my friend will be polite uh, we'll do maybe and um, of course, let's see how many we got. One, two, three, four, five responses. Let's do one more. We'll say Outlook, not so good. Cool. Exclamation point. All right, so now we have a list of responses. So now, rather than create this logic that we did below with if answer equals one, answer equals two, we can do print random dot choice open parentheses responses. Okay. So what's happening here is we're going to use choice from the random module and in the parentheses we're going to pass in the name of the list which is responses so this is going to print out one of the items in the list so I'm going to run it ask the magic eight ball a yes or no question um, will it rain tomorrow Outlook, not so good. So see, it works the same way. Now the difference here, I'm going to bring up the code that I commented out. But if we take out these spaces, I mean, if you look at what we did between lines 5 and 8, that's 1, 2, 3, 4 lines of code, right? Now, you can again, you can do things either way, but it's much easier than... You know, writing, let's see, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 lines of code. And what I encourage you to do whenever you're trying to create something or you're working on a project, just get it done at first, right? Just just make the program work. And uh, especially when you're learning, you know, early on. And then you can go back and revisit it and see if you can create it with fewer lines of code. It's good practice. Now I'm just going to make this, uh, I'm just going to take this to the next level uh, by incorporating a function just to practice what we went over in Introduction to Python Episode 4. I'm just going to make the uh, Magic 8-Ball a function. So to do that, I'm going to do DEF and I'm going to call it, uh, what am I going to call this function? Um, 
fortune teller. Let's do that. Then open close parentheses, colon, and now everything under it needs to be indented. So when I when I created this fortune teller uh, function, need to make sure that I uh, everything is indented in order for it to to work. So there we go. Now we're gonna run it. I'm gonna call fortune teller. Greetings. Ask the magic magic eight ball a yes or no question. Will it rain next Wednesday? Yes. So cool. Well, alrighty. And don't don't uh, get uh, tripped up about the squiggly line under user question. This is just Replit letting us know that we're not doing anything with the user question. Um, again, since we're giving a random response and we're not determining which um, which response to give based on the question. But what we could do in order to use the question, in our print statement, we can say, uh, let's do this. We'll do some concatenation. So I'm just going to move this to the side some. And I'm going to say, you asked, again, and this is concatenation. We did this in episode one. So you asked, and then here I'm going to do plus user question plus and the response is and then we can do plus and there we go so now we have some concatenation and we're going to use the user question so I'm just going to run it let's type in the name of the function fortune teller open close parentheses Greetings, ask the Magic 8 Ball a yes or no question. Will it snow today? You asked, will it snow today? And the response is yes. <laughs> I hope that's not the case because it's summertime. But uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. Uh, continue practicing. Again, I just want to remind you that well, we'll be releasing more and more Python videos uh, going forward. They're going to be more task-based or challenge-based. Um, and as we go along with these little mini projects, I'll incorporate some, some new features. Also want to remind you that you can schedule a virtual book of librarian with a learning lab specialist, and we can go over uh, some more Python one-on-one -on -one virtually. And also, be sure to subscribe to GCPL's YouTube. We're adding tons and tons and tons of a, amazing virtual programming. So that way you'll get notified whenever there's uh, new programming and also new Python videos. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you again next time.